Good evening, my lovelies, and welcome back to another handy dandy what are we doing tonight crafting video. <clears throat> For those of you that have been here before, you know what we're working on. For those of you that haven't, I've been commissioned to make a giant uh, mushroom with text cross stitch pattern. The pattern itself took me about two or three weeks to finally pin down completely. Um, much trial and error. And together we have gone over how to do our lettering and how to do uh, find the right hoop for you and the differences between um, different Ada cloth and last time I told you how to do we t did the word that together I also mentioned that lettering is once you get the hang of it rather I won't say simple because just because it's makes sense to me doesn't mean it's gonna make sense to you and that would be rude of me to assume things um, <clears throat> But if you get the hang of it, lettering it does get a bit easier over time because it's one of those few things where uh, if you mess up, you're going to notice rather quickly because it's letters. I think right around here, I realized that the T that I had done did not match the T down here, so I had to redo that entire letter, just take everything out and start all over again. I also start started with the skulls here up top and if you're curious just how this thing's going to work from pattern to actually to reality it's, it's quite a size difference and this is with you know an average piece of Ada cloth imagine what happens if we were to make this inside of a, an 18 or god forbid a 24 one day when I actually do want to try and work with the 24 one day and just see how absolutely insane that's going to be. So, once again, my hoop wants to be a butt. So we're going to try and get that in there. Over time, your hoops will get a bit easier to manage. Over time. But we are going to have to work together with our hoop for the moment because it wants to be a child. Let's see. Because there's a lot of space between our skull here and where these guys start, to make it easier on us, I want to actually start with these curly cued vines to get us down to this mushroom. Unfortunately, that means we're going to have to take this out of our hoop to get to it. Because that going to be a tight fit. But you can very easily do all this stuff without putting something in a hoop. The hoop just helps keep it taut for you and once you start getting comfortable with that tautness, you're good to go. You, can, you don't really have to use the hoop if you don't want to. Again, to each their own. It's your project. You do what makes you comfortable. At the same time, as we learned the last time we were together, we should also be cautious because just because your needle is dull does not mean it will not stab you. I've thankfully healed up, got a little bit of a scab you can't really see, but all good. Of course, I'm trying to uh, Tried to make sure I had everything I needed tonight. I did not, ironically enough, uh, collect band-aids to have next to me in case that happened again. So let's cross our fingers that uh, my needle does not want more of me. So my plan of attack for the for these vines is I don't have an olive green. I have neon green, I have this green. What I wanted to do 
was take one strand of this green and one strand of black and work them together and see what that did visually. I've never actually tried it before, so I figured we would give it a shot today. And worst case scenario, we don't like it, we just take it out and we find something else that, that fits our fancy. No biggie. But I think that would look kind of cool, personally. Let's find out. Is there a thread? I'm going to get rid of this little extra tail snippet. So we're about the same length there. <coughs> Then we're going to start this puppy up and see how lucky we get. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we don't like it. Again, we take it out. No big worries there. Um, if there's any questions you have, feel free to ask them in the chat and we will figure out the best ways to answer your questions. So. Looking at our pattern, the best way to start this is with these two guys right here. Because it is literally one space above where our Y little curly Q is. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start right there on the top of that Y. Okay, we're good there. Now we're going to go bottom left, up top right. Bottom left, top right. And we're going to just patiently, because we don't want to mess this up too badly, work our way across that curly cue. And once we get this curly bit done, then we're going to go work on that first mushroom here. And you'll notice that that one is colored in but it doesn't have a thick black outline like the mushrooms we've already worked on did, did, has. You'll notice it has a very thin line. I personally do that in my patterns so that I can remind myself I need to do this. So when we get there, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to work our way back. Now you could, if you wanted to, put this into a smaller hoop so you have a better uh, tautness on your Ada cloth. But I'm personally not going to do that because it doesn't bother me too, too much. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't snag my floss on the outside of my Ada cloth because then it's going to get pulled on over the place and snag on stuff. So we did this little bit right here. Now we're going to work up and then come back down. Now remember, a lot of the of cross stitching, like we've already mentioned before, it's it's just a grid. So if you can draw something on graph paper, you can definitely put it into a cross stitch pattern, which makes it pretty, you know, easy, fun. It uh, leaves a lot of room for you to experiment yourself, which is good. I don't know about the rest of you, but the heat today was absolutely abysmal. I've got 
close friend of mine that's chilling out in Colorado, and I mean chilling out, I mean quite literally chilling out. They sent me a picture that they have snow. And me, personally, have I've never really seen snow, because of where I live, the land of oranges and riding crocodiles to school. But I told her I would trade her in a heartbeat. Because this heat is just killer. It is getting worse every single day. And when you work outside, it's not fun. Let's see, two, three, four. And then we need to go three across. I just want to give you all a heads up that come August, my streams are probably going to be a little bit more sporadic or spread out because our newest edition is supposed to be here at that point. And I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen. So, my doctor, though, seems to enjoy my birth plan, which she asked me that in my last appointment of what, you know, you made your birth plan, do you know which, how to get to the hospital, yada, yada, yada. And I told her, honestly, ma'am, my birth plan is three steps. Get to hospital, get epidural, have baby. That's it. Now that some folks out there go all out on their birth plan. Like some people go all out for their wedding planning. But that's, that's really not my gig. I'm going to have enough trouble remembering to breathe and getting to the hospital. I don't need to worry about a doula and uh, a nebulizer or incense or waterfall CDs. That's just more crap I need to carry around the hospital. I would much rather just worry about getting there and having a healthy baby. That's the important part, right? Happy thoughts, healthy babies, not decking a nurse or a doctor when the pain gets too big, right? Isn't that frowned upon? Speaking of which, though, I, I applaud every nurse, every practitioner, nurse practitioner that I see because they, they, they know their stuff. They are the hardest workers I've ever seen in any hospital. No offense to doctors and surgeons and all that jazz, but they kind of have a specialty and they go with it. Whereas nurses, y'all, you need to know a lot about a lot of different things. Because you're the ones that deal with the patients when the doctor goes away. Doctors might slice and dice and show up for three minutes and leave. But you are the ones that stay around and make sure medications are taken, there's no bad symptoms. You all are the real MVPs. <clears throat> Let's see. That. Don't you do that. That's not nice. What did we do? I don't even know. That was weird. Hmm. Quick fix. Weird, but quick fix, so that's a plus. 
silver lining and all that jazz. I personally want to start asking all of my garages what they think happens because I, with all the deliveries I make, I have lots of my garages that look at me and go, oh my god, you're still working, or oh, when are you out? Because at almost eight and a half months, I am still working, and everyone is kind of looking at me like I'm grown another head. Though, on the flip side, to be fair, right around now, with my first pregnancy, um, thank you, Facebook, on this day memory thingy. Um, I was trying to get put on short term uh, disability because she was tap dancing all over my sciatic nerve, which is making it very hard to walk safely and do anything safely. Um, of course, where I work now, they care from about my well-being a lot more than where I used to work, since most theme parks don't really care as long as the people that are coming are paying to be there are happy. Let's see, let me go up three. Oof. But it's my boss, who is like a few months older than I am and has never really dealt with pregnant anybody's, doesn't really know how to, I don't know if deal with me is the right phrase, but he's not 100% sure how to proceed. He doesn't know when I should go out on leave. We don't know what to do about any of that stuff. So we're all learning together. I think he's pretty much just told me, you let me know when you need to go. And we'll go from there. Which is fine. I mean, I guess it's an interesting change from being a, a big wig theme park that seems to think it knows better than you do about your own body. But when kiddo number two gets here, it doesn't much matter because I plan on going part time because unfortunately my husband and I cannot afford like the $385 a week bill to put two children in daycare. Not to mention, we've also, we don't want somebody else, we don't want to pretty much pay somebody else to raise our kids. Because that was what was going to happen at Disney, which is why, oh, whoops, sorry, slipped, that one slipped out. That's what happened when I worked for the mouse, since that's already been said. Sure, let's go with it. I don't work there anymore. But um, we mathed it out that if I were to stay and work for them, I would literally only be able to afford daycare. So I would, quite literally, not exaggerating, just be working to have somebody watch my kid. That was it. So spouse and I decided, instead of that malarkey, how about I stay home? and take care of our daughter because we we're both of the mentality that if someone's gonna mess up our kid it's gonna be us but even still even so I uh, researched multiple places before we came to that conclusion I looked at many many daycares in the area close to work close to home midway between I did everything I could think of um, but in the end, it all came down to what can we afford and what is best for our kid. 
And it turned out that what was best for our kid was to hang out with mommy and learn things like how to take care of herself and manners, which she took to with flying colors. She is like the politest little three-year-old I've ever I've ever met. It's amazing. Oh, especially when you compare her to other little ones that I've seen. Unfortunately, this also includes ones that are in my family. But where did my black? There's my black. And my green. But that's what I got to tell my boss today and my and his boss, because he was visiting today. I'm not 100% sure why, but he he was. But got to tell them both that. My plans come August are going to involve reverting back to what I did, I was doing. Oh gracious, how long ago was that now? Because for the past, mm, going on three years, well, going on four years now, goodness sake, she'll be four in August. <coughs> going off the past four years, I was working part-time and only delivering on the weekends, which was fine. But then we decided we wanted to integrate kiddo into getting used to being around other kids because preschool's coming up. and So I went full-time, which was awesome. Better relationship with my garages, get more stuff done at work. All good stuff, right? But it brings us back to square one. I can't keep doing that when baby number two gets here. Because then we get back to the... I am working just to pay a, a daycare bill for someone else to watch my kid. And I'm not okay with that. Not to mention, the daycare I have currently is delightful. They are fantastic. Which is really good because going back to our the first part of earlier earlier part of the conversation, um, after my spouse and I had decided that I was going to stay home with kiddo number one, about I want to say three to six months later, some of the places that I had looked at as a daycare for her started showing up in the news for some pretty skeevy doings like tossing toddlers and picking up kids from nap nap mats and then tossing them back on the floor or not cleaning up after the young the younglings so you can kind of get where I'm coming from I hope that you know that you know we suddenly were very happy with our decision to keep our kiddo home with me. But she is also taken to school like a fish to water. Well, we call it school. She's taken to daycare like a fish to water. But she is a social butterfly. She will talk to anybody that holds still long enough, and sometimes even people that don't. I'm going to have to explain stranger danger to that kid real quick before something bad happens. Let's see. I'm going to get the rest of this little swirl out of the way. And I think, I think we're going to have enough. Eight of cloth so that we can put our hoop back on and get our taunt material back. And sorry that my camera's all cattywampus because I'm really liking how this green and black vine thing is working. That's the fun thing about black. It will darken whatever you use with it. Without really, even if it doesn't change the color physically, like if you're using paint or marker or anything of that nature, it will act just 
it makes your eye see a darker color when you blend it next to another material like yarn or as I'm looking at our uh, floss here. I think it looks nifty. It kind of gives the illusion of thorns. I like it. Hopefully the person that commissioned it will also like it. Fingers crossed, because I would really hate to have gotten all this stuff on here and then they she decided that she didn't want the vines anymore. That would be unfortunate. But that is the risk you take when you do commission work, my dears. Which is why it is always a very good thing. Just as a suggestion. It's always a very good thing when doing commission work to have a constant communication with the person who is commissioning that piece. Whether it's for multiple sketches. Like I said, I went through and did this pattern like four or five flipping times before I got the pattern that you see before you today. Um, with colors, positions, and plus, it all depends on what your craft is. If you crochet, if you sew clothing, if you paint, if you draw, you're going to want to let that other person who's commissioning that piece from you have a look-see. Um, so that you don't get to like a finished product and everything is awesome and you think everything is beautiful and then the person who actually is paying for it goes, wait, this looks funny, I don't like it, go back. And if you're like me and you are a, a traditional artist, meaning, you know, colored pencils, markers, uh, pretty much materials you use with your hands and not a digital artist with a tablet on your computer. Anytime someone tells you, no, I don't like it, go back, and you've already finished the drawing, you've finished that painting, you've finished that charcoal drawing, there's really no going back. Going back to to us means starting from scratch, which is really annoying, actually, depending on how far you went in the piece. So it is always good to double check and get the okay from the person as you go. Like this entire time I've been working on this, I have been sending photos to my the person who did the commission request to make sure it's what she wanted. And so far, I'm doing pretty good. I just have to remember that I told her that this these yellow stalks on the mushrooms is not the actual color that the mushroom stalks are going to be. Why is that, do you ask? Because I don't have a wide array of markers, and I did what I could with what I had. <laughs> So we're actually going to try and make uh, all of our mushroom stalks more of like this fleshy taupe color. Cause I'm, there is, let's be real, there is very possible, it, it's very possible there are mushrooms out there that have brilliant yellow stems like that, what I've drawn out, but those colors did not appeal to the person uh, who commissioned it. So, we will work with what we got, my dears. I'm going to do a little triangle bit. Well, not triangle bit. We have this little step stool looking, step stairs looking thing. And like I've mentioned previously, if this is something you want to get into, it's a rather easy hobby to get into. I would suggest seeing if you can draw in pixel form first, and if you can do that, you're awesome. And again, graph paper is easy to come by. I got my little drawing book and my composition book at Walmart. 
for a few dollars. Um, and if you said, no, well, I don't know if I can do that, that's fine. But do you do do you do perler bead work? Because that's the exact same thing, and I don't involve an, an I. And, th and thankfully, we don't have to worry about irons with cross stitch, unless your Ada cloth is very very uh, curved and messy when you start, and then you have to kind of worry about it because then you better. Um, Iron it flat. Let's see, how far is that? That's not terrible. Let's keep going. Because remember, no one's going to see the back of your work unless you flash them the back of your work. Or you decide you want to put it in a hoop without some sort of uh, felt material behind it. But the reason why I say that is that I just, I see you, you think you're sneaky, but you're not. I did that right there. I went from down here to up here with my floss. There we go. And having knots on the back of your work is fine. Don't tell my mother-in-law because she might have, a, she might panic. But having knots on the back of your work is fine, especially if your floss is snagged and you can't get the knot out, it's okay. Um, I personally try and make sure the knot either stays in the back or I can get the knot out in general. Because if you have a knot that you're not aware of and you keep going and you don't keep it taunt, keep your floss taunt, later on you'll be messing with your work and finishing up and all of a sudden you'll realize that you have weak floss or threads in one corner because you weren't holding your, flo your floss firmly while you were doing your work. Been there. Done that. Frustrating as all get out. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna go down one, two, three, four. We're gonna go diagonal down. And like I said, the fun thing about this pattern is it's a mirror image. So I can do half with you lovely folks, and then I can go and do half off camera. And with our powers combined, we will get this commission piece pretty and done with. And then we can come together and work on more stuff. Um, <clears throat> which brings us to the next step. If there is something that you want made at my Etsy shop, whether it's a, I do take uh, custom commission requests, if there is something that you think, hey, this would be really cool for this flavor nerd in my family. Awesome, that's cool. I like making random new stuff. Hit me up. Let's see what we can make. And if it's something that we can do together, one, two, three, four. We might even do it here on our Twitch stream. So you can see it being made. It's kind of like those movies you watched in science class, watching a baby be born. Unless you went to one of those schools where they separated the boys and the girls. What I think is stupid. Okay, we finished our first chunk of vine. How cool is that? All of that is now right there. Pretty and good to go. So, we're going to work on that top of the mushroom cap. We're going to use dark brown, nice tan, and then that taupe fleshy color. Fortunately, all my lights are a little cattywampus today. That's weird. So, let's 
get a good strand here. We don't really... Mm. Mm -hmm. That'll be fine. And the goal of what we're going to do here is we're going to do this entire piece and then when we're done with it we're going to come back with one strand of black just one and we're going to outline it. For any of my uh, traditional media artists out there who draw like I do it's pretty much going to be the exact opposite of what we normally do. Because if you draw with colored pencils or a marker anything of that nature the first thing you do is you do an ink outline and then you color it in. Uh, there are probably some of you out there that really enjoy the adult coloring books, the ones that are stupidly intricate with itty bitty markers. Same thing with the uh, outline that you're coloring in. That's usually how you go about with art projects. Not so with cross stitch. If I were to put an outline down first, I would then unfortunately be cross stitching over that line when I went and colored it in. That wouldn't be good for anybody. Let's see. So we're going to be going one, two, three, four, five across. So we got one, two, three. Four, five across. Now we're going to go five back. <clears throat> Honestly, I believe that after we do this stream, though, my lovelies, since we've I've pretty much taught you all the tricks of the trade I I have. For the for this project, I think the next time we might meet up, we're going to work on something different. Whether it's going to be cross stitch or crochet, I don't know. We should do a poll and figure that out. Because I know that my husband needs my assistance working on um, A banner for his Twitch stream, which if you like watching video game walk not so much walkthroughs, but somebody playing video games, uh, go check out his channel on Captain Kyle Games. I think he's actually right now doing Assassin's Creed Odyssey in the living room, sailing the high seas as the lovely Cassandra. Um, but remember we also need to work on the Mudkip hat and diaper cover. We're also going to be working on Pachamari. If you go over to my Etsy store at, you know, etsy.com forward slash critter stitching, my Pachamari from the delightful Overwatch game are uh, for sale there. I have a project that I'm working on currently where I have to make up a few of those for a young lady. And I was actually telling her I would make her one of my special diva Pachamaris. I'm currently working on trying to make a Pachamari version of all the Overwatch characters. It's unfortunately becoming a little bit more difficult as my pregnancy progresses because I'm starting to lose feeling in my hands faster. So keeping my hands at a certain angle to work a crochet hook is getting a bit more difficult as time progresses, unfortunately, which is why it's taking me forever and a day to get those Pachamari to her. Thankfully, though, she is extremely patient and understands my dilemma, which is awesome. It's always nice to f find somebody that understands that I am also a human, albeit a crafty human, I am still a human who is currently working on making another human. 
who is currently kicking like a crazy person. Oof. But interestingly enough, my family has all put their uh, two cents in for when they think he's going to make his grand entrance. My mother, I don't think, understands the concept of guess a date. Because whereas my mother-in-law, my spouse, my friends, girlfriends, all that jazz, made up the comments of, oh, well, I'm going to guess, you know, mid-July and give me July 14th, 16th, 18th. I'm personally crossing my fingers for July 31st so I can have a Harry Potter baby. He would hate that because he'd have a Harry Potter themed party every year until they told me to stop. Um, my mother decided her guess was going to be August 1st through the 5th. For those of you that are wondering, wait, what? Yeah, she tried to, she's decided she's going to guess one of five days. She's going to guess five days. She's not going to guess one date. She's going to guess one of five dates. Which kind of saturates the pool, in my opinion, but... <clears throat> Who am I to judge? I am currently an incubator. <sighs> Which is also why I would love for the eight, for the heat that is my state to, you know, take a step back for a second, let it rain, let it cool down, because that'd be fantastic. <laughs> this heat is killer. I think my delivery vehicle told me it reached 100 degrees today, and as soon as you turn off the car, you definitely feel it, because the scene, I don't know, What's up with that? But as soon as you turn the car off, the AC stops. It's not like when you're in your home and you turn off the AC when the house stays relatively cool. As soon as you turn off the car, the AC just kind of gone. No more AC for you. If the car was like an icebox before you turned it off, that's nice. It's now heating up slowly. And it's going to melt your brain. Let's see, one, two, three, four. But to be fair, it's also why they tell you not to leave your dogs or your children in the car. Because that's just irresponsible. Speaking of that, right around the time that my daughter was born, a rash of those incidents popped up in the media the parents leaving their kids in cars or their pets and all that jazz and they came up with quote the shoe trick which like even the news is telling you to do it's like here take your shoe and put that in the back seat so that when you get out of the car you'll remember to grab your shoe to which me being the sarcastic person that I am looked at my spouse and went okay so I'm I can remember a shoe, but I can't remember the thing I've spent 10 months making in my womb. That logic is skewed. I don't understand people. I don't... I mean, I don't have the best memory. I get it. Not everybody does, and that's, that's fine. I mean, there's not much you can really do about that, which is sad. But I look to make sure that my daughter's not in the car, even when she's not even with with me. Even if she's over at my her Mimi's house, I will check to make sure my daughter is not in the car. Because that's the kind of paranoid person I am. Just the thought of leaving her in the heat. I mean, I've turned off my vehicle and sat in it for a few minutes, and a few minutes is enough to make me want to just kick rocks. I can't imagine the people that leave their kids in the car and then go grocery shopping or 
take their dogs out for a car ride and then leave them in the vehicle when they go to the mall. It's just... What's the point of taking your kid or your pet with you somewhere if you're just going to leave them in the car? What do you think your, ch your loved one is? An ex a purse? Of course I joke, but I'm convinced that certain people in my family think their children are purses. Because it's all they seem to bicker about. Let's see if we can get that last little square done before our yarn runs out, our thread runs out. I think we're gonna make it. Double check. Yep, looks good. But one thing I've also thought about doing, looked into doing, is occasionally playing a game myself. Because I'm also a gamer. I enjoy gaming a lot. I've been doing it since I was. Ten, when my family got my first console, the Nintendo 64. Now that was a delightful gaming console. I still have it. It still works. I love it. <sighs> gave me my first console and my first games. Uh, Mario 64 and um, Goldeneye, which I don't think my dad knew exactly what that was when he gave it to me, because he probably wouldn't have gotten it for me if he did. He was the type of guy that would, uh, you know, oh, there's a somewhat intimate scene on TV. I'm going to get up and dance in front of the screen so you can't see it. Or be the ones that forcefully cover your eyes so you don't see it, no matter what age you are. I don't think he would have liked Game of Thrones. He passed away and... What, 2015, 2014? He's been gone a while. But, um, and my favorite game that they got me was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. That is probably my favorite game ever, just because I, th I think it imprinted on me like a baby duck. I mean, I actually have a tattoo on my upper left shoulder that I designed based on the Legend of Zelda. It's, it's, it's Navi flying around the Triforce. But that game is just beautifully done. Wait, and it makes me really happy that we were able to get a, the Switch recently so I can keep playing and giving in to my want for Zelda because our little girl likes watching both me and my spouse play Zelda. As she calls it, she uh, wants to, she actually will tell us, I want to watch you play Zelda and find Koroks and fight Guardians and even her alarm for getting out of the bathtub is um, the Guardian fight music. And she'll tell you exactly what's happening in that music, too. It is it is like a very proud, nerdy, mommy moment every time she does that. I love it. And even at the age of three, she actually has also played her first video game, uh, Spyro. The, they recently came out with Spyro Remastered which I personally never played Spyro growing up. I've I heard of him. I've never actually played him. So the remastered was a perfect time to try him out. And our youngling just fell in love with the little purple dragon. So whenever we had downtime, it was one of those, I want to watch you play Spyro. And then it was, I want to play Spyro. You watch me. 
and we taught her the controls and she started playing Spyro all by herself <laughs> at the age of three. I'm actually very proud of that. My mother doesn't understand that because she doesn't my mother is a go 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 person. She doesn't sit and have a hobby to relax. Like she has to keep moving or it'll just drive her crazy. She's like a shark. If she's not constantly moving, she's going to die. So she doesn't understand the mental processes that go into video games. She doesn't understand how you can sit there for hours playing a game. She probably wouldn't be wouldn't really like cross stitch either now that I think about it because she's a move move mover. I tried teaching her how to crochet one year. That was what she actually told me she wanted as her uh, Christmas, her birthday. She wanted it for one of her gifts for whatever event was happening. And I told her, sure, no worries. And we went out, we got hooks, we got yarn, I got her a book because she wanted to make uh, my daughter a baby blanket, which, let's be real, the blanket might be quite large, but it is also a pretty simple way to learn how to crochet is just a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So how do you go wrong, right? But I started to teach her and she just lost interest rather quickly. I don't know, don't know if it was all of the terms I was using because let's be real, crochet has a lot of terms like single crochet, half double crochet, treble crochet. Uh, I've probably lost a few of you already if you don't know what those terms are. And then there's the depending on its if it's an American pattern or a UK pattern you've got to work on that because sometimes the the wording is different. Like I had a pattern that I was working I was actually making a stegosaurus for my mother for Mother's Day or Boss's Day. It was something. I was making her a red and black stegosaurus, her request, which was fine, but the pattern I found was, uh, was working on it, and then I started realizing rather quickly that something was hinky, something was, was not right, and what turned out being not right was that it was a, a UK pattern. The UK pattern says double crochet when they mean single crochet. So I was sitting here trying to make a double crochet dinosaur and it was turning out to look like a hat because double crochet is usually it's A is a bigger stitch and B it's usually used for things like scarves or beanies or something of the like. When it comes to making dolls, you want to use single crochet because it's a tighter stitch. So you can understand my confusion when I'm trying to make a dinosaur and it's coming out looking like a hat. It does. It didn't look anything like the pictures I had on the pattern, so I was really confused. But thankfully, now I know what to look for. And I haven't had that problem crop up since, but as you work on patterns, whether it's for crochet or cross stitch or um, sewing, whatever, there's always going to be a bit of a language barrier if it's from a different country. Which is fine. It just means you get to learn something new. It usually helps if you know phrases. And if you don't, that's where Google Translate comes in handy. Trust me on that. I have a sweater that I made for, I made a few times actually, and it came up came up that the pattern I was reading was I believe it was originally Norwegian I think is what it was Ooh. 
Oof. Okay. So we finish our little mushroom top. Now we're going to go down and go up with our um, taupe to make the stalk and get us to the other mushroom. I don't know where our music went. Did our music stop? No, there it goes. Weird. <clears throat> I'll also say, for those of you that don't know, that I also have a YouTube channel that I'm getting up and running. Um, it's Critter Stitching, if you want to look that one up. And if you happen to miss the stream here, I will be uploading the videos there within a few days of the stream airing on Twitch. I think I might just put out the YouTube videos on Mondays. That way I can... I don't want to say get a backlog, but... keep some, keep a regular inter interval, that way I also don't overload people if they decide to start watching. And if you do, fabulous. Because that keeps me doing what I'm doing. Okay. We got our taupe, now we're going to start working on the stalk of our mushroom. Taupe, just like white, is another very light color. So we're going to have to keep an eye on what's going where so we don't forget what we were doing. Once you get some of the stitches in there, though, you can definitely tell the difference. If it's because taupe slash flesh tone or uh, off white, like eggshell. After a while, you'll definitely tell that it's there once you get a few stitches in because the color is enough to alter from the pure white background. Like if you look over here at my skulls, this is done in like an ivory. And you can tell it's different from the white background of my Ada cloth. Because there's enough of it there. And also, I outlined it in a very dark color, so it makes it pop even more. It gives it kind of a finished look, in my opinion. Do you have to outline everything? No. No, you do not. And if you've been paying attention for the last few episodes, you know why. Because it's your craft. You don't have to outline diddly squat. I'm just saying from experience, it lends a more finished look to your design. Let's see, we're going to go down to I know you might, some of you might be tempted to do a uh, what is the word I'm thinking of? Why go back and forth, Mama D? Why can't I just flip under and then go up in the next one? You can totally do that. If that's something you want to work on and you want to do that for your project, you can. But I want you to know ahead of time that by doing that, you're going to stretch out your Ada cloth. Um, especially if you do it too much. Because doing that applies pressure to your Ada, which will then apply, will pull it loose from your hoop, which is also not good. Because then you gotta go through the hassle of undoing it and putting it back, and yada yada yada. And you can see now what I was talking about with the color is just enough that you can differentiate between the background, which is good. Also, you might want to make sure you have good light source because trying to work with a light color on a white Ada in darkness is awful. So. We have a green vine that's going to come around here, so we got to skip over and go down these three here. Choo, choo, choo. 
But for those of you that don't watch streams for the entirety, which is fine, again, come by to visit, that's still nice. You don't have to stay for the entire hour or so of me babbling to myself. <coughs> um, if you're interested in buying or you have a gift idea and you want to talk to somebody to see if it's something that can be made, whether it is cross stitch or crochet, please feel free to message me here at Twitch or on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Etsy or YouTube, all under Critter Stitching. It's the same name across the board. Spelled just like it is up here in my Twitch stream. Um, and depending on what it is, if you want it to be done live, we can do that too. And we can show you how your work comes to life. It's really fun, especially if it's something I haven't done before. So I always love trying to learn new patterns or make new things. Like I'm currently for my little girl, I am making a Ghibli set of dolls because she absolutely loves Studio Ghibli stuff, which makes me very happy because I too love Studio Ghibli stuff. Um, but I've made her a Totoro. I've made her a little May plushie from Totoro. We have a Sophie doll from Howl's Moving Castle. We have Chihiro from Spirit Away, which was my first Ghibli film, which I love to pieces. I will watch forever in a day. So we have a Chihiro. I believe I have it's another one. Who is it? I can't remember who my other one is. That's a pity. And of course, Kiddo is requesting that I make Howl, which is going to be interesting because Howl goes through like three or four different transformations in that in his film. So I'm going to have to double check with her which one she wants. Because there's long-haired Howl, there's hair in my face Howl, there's the checkerboard jacket Howl, there's the mimicking the Goblin King Jareth Howl at the end with black hair, blonde hair. We've got to figure out which one she wants because there's, like I said, a lot of different howls. But those girls aren't up on my Etsy page yet because I kind of wanted to get the entire set made up and put and have patterns for before I put them up because, oh, Kiki, that was it. I made Kiki as well which she also really enjoys. She just loves them all. Everything we've put, in, every Ghibli thing we've put in front of her, she's really enjoyed. Um, but I wanted to get all of their patterns done and made up so I can photograph them all as a group before I went to try and sell them and see if anybody else wanted their own for their own enjoyment. Let's see, what we're going to do is finish up this stalk. We're going to throw together that other mushroom top really quick. And then we're going to show you how to do outlines. And then you, my dears, are done for the evening. I figure as we go through and we're together longer, and we get some folks in the chat talking. We might actually get more entertaining uh, anecdotes and such from me, or more live action requests for stuff. Because I'm stupidly good at talking to myself, probably a bit more than I should. Which, honestly, if you want a perfect excuse to talk to yourself, procreate. I use my kiddo as an excuse to talk to myself in public all the time. 
I don't think she knows that, but she pretty much my, what I've lovingly nicknamed my insanity beard. Because if you're talking to yourself out in public, people think you're nuts. But if you're constantly talking to your baby or your dog, everybody thinks you're just giving them lots of attention. Which, to be fair, is true. Kiddo now is much more comfortable talking and using phrases that most three-year-olds don't know because I just wouldn't shut up when she was itty-bitty. Her language center is pretty intact. Let's see. We're going to go across here and then back. This seems the easiest thing to do right now. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. I see you back there. You thought you were trying to be sneaky. Can I get you out is the question. Mm, nope. The answer is no. I cannot. It's unfortunate. Oh well. I have to make sure we make our pass back a bit more snug than normal so that I can't escape. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Spiffy. But I personally can't wait till kiddo gets older so that she is. She's going to be my horror, my scary movie buddy for theaters. I don't really have one of those. Unfortunately, my scary movie buddy moved to Colorado, and that's a long trip for a movie time. But my spouse, he will watch horror films with me if I can spin it in a way that make that would catch his interest. Or like every October, we do Thirty One Days of Horror. And I will put together a list of scary movies. And then every night we will watch a different scary movie. And by doing this, I've gotten him through, you know, some of the classics. You know, the original It with Tim Curry. Or The Shining. You know that my husband has actually been to the hotel. That they filmed it and he'd actually never seen The Shining. I... I I wanted to hit him with a book the day he told me that. I was just flabbergasted. It's like, you were there. You were there. You 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 walked the creepy hallway. You did all of that, and you didn't think to... It's just, I love you, but right now, you just disturb me greatly, spouse. But... Uh, I believe he's also gotten through the original Pet Cemetery. A lot of zombie films. Some films that actually weren't that good, but they're kind of like visual, like uh, movie train wrecks. You can't really look away. You've got to finish them. I'm half tempted to be awful and put him through the Babadook next Halloween, but I'm not. 100% sure I can put up with listening to that child screech again. Because that was honestly probably the worst part of the Babadook for me. Was that child. The kid drove me nuts. I mean, no offense to families that have children that scream constantly. But... If anyone's actually seen the Babadook, they know exactly what I'm talking about. That child was greatly disturbed, and it drove me crazy. 
what was it, Wreck? I think it was Wreck, actually. That was a delightfully spooky uh, horror film. Uh, zombies, Infection. It's in Spanish, but that's fine. I can deal with Spanish. Um, I got subtitles. I will survive. But, uh, that was, that was delightful. And the sequel, because there's Wreck 2. I don't remember how many wrecks there are. I've only seen, uh, the first two. If there are more. But, that was a little slow at the very, very beginning. Not gonna lie, a little slow. But, after it picked up, it was just non-stop in your face. What's gonna happen next? Someone's gonna flip and die. It was a very good film. I would highly suggest that to anybody that likes thrills and chills in different languages. And there were some other ones that were kind of, eh, okay. I can see where they're going with this, but, you know, not really my cup of tea. Like, um, It Follows, for example. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like, oh my god, I need to watch this again because it was so good either, but to each their own. It was pretty much, what if, you know, scary thing that wants to kill you is kind of like an STD. And of course, I am one of those people that just overthinks films and way, way too much do I overthink some, some films. Because I'm just sitting there going, okay, some douche canoe sleeps with you. Thankfully, thankfully, he was, quote, nice enough to tell you that, uh, you're going to be haunted by this thing that wants to kill you and turn you inside out for the most part. At least he told you. But why wouldn't you just instantly go, you know, fornicate with a lady of the night or gentleman of the night who will then have relations with somebody else? It's like if it's a ghosty STD that get, goes to the next person when you have intercourse, that's, that's personally what I would do, but I am thankfully not in that kind of horror movie situation. So what else? Oh, our, one of our favorites, though, you know, Cabin in the Woods. If you enjoy Joss Whedon and you enjoy comedy and you enjoy humor, but you also want to see someone get their face ripped off by redneck zombies... That is definitely a thing to watch. Just putting that out there. I think Marty is like my favorite character to ever grace the screen for a horror movie. His character design is fantastic. There's, of course, I, I have questions for certain parts of the film, but I don't really want to pick at that one too much because I enjoy it. I'm looking forward to, uh, I don't know who it's, I know, I think it's produced by Guillermo del Toro, but there's the, what was it, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, which, if you've read the books, you kind of know what you're looking, what you're, it's, it's a, you know, a collection of, quote, kids horror and they're making it into a full-out rated R film, and I've seen the previews, and I am just practically salivating in excitement. Along with uh, It Part 2, looking forward to that one as well, because... Does anybody else think it's funny that all the Skarsgård children are doing, like, weird, creepy things? You know. Uh, it, Hemlock Grove... Um... Vikings, True Blood, and yet their dad is out there singing to Mamma Mia. I, I personally find that rather enjoyable. <laughs> I 
course, I think there's, isn't there like one Skarsgård that isn't in film? I think he's a writer or something. I can't remember. There's like, I feel like every time I look it up, there's more Skarsgårds than there was the last time I looked it up. Which, to be fair, is completely fine. I will happily stare at the Skarsgård family until the cows come home. But I also think it's interesting as all get out that uh, I don't know if he's, he's not the youngest. The Skarsgård that's playing Pennywise. All of that really nifty stuff that he does with his mouth, like the weird bottom lip, the teeth, um, the lazy eye, that's actually not prosthetics. That's just him. That's just him being weird. That's just something he's able to do. And then not to mention that most of his stunts he does himself, and watching him do that is just entertaining. I, I really enjoy getting like the special edition movies and DVDs and stuff so I can watch how they make certain things happen. I'm not 100% sure if my spouse is behind me 100% each time I do that, but I live for the how-tos or gag reels for these special edition films. It's always with all of the stress of a horror film, you got it. You know that they've got to break down at some point and just start laughing. Because something's got to give. But get in there. There we go. But currently, if I'm not doing this, Spouse Snyder, he is determined to get me through Evangelion, which is now on Netflix. I have personally never seen it, um, mostly because I, when I was younger, didn't know it was a thing, and uh, which is, you know, I my childhood was, you know, a sheltered thing. Very religious household, it didn't stick. But my father didn't even like me reading about things that were gory or, you know, not Bible related. I don't think he would have approved of Evangelion. Heck, I don't think he, he didn't even approve of like Grey's Anatomy or Buffy the Vampire Slayer when I was growing up, so it's probably a good thing I'm, you know, an adult and moved out and enjoying my life as is. It's like I said earlier, he don't, I don't think he'd get behind Game of Thrones or like anything of that nature. It's not in his wheelhouse. So we've got a few more rows with this mushroom, and then we'll teach you how to do line work, like I said, and then we'll be good to go, my dears. Because if you notice, we've had a few videos so far, so you know what I'm doing. You're, you know, it's literally back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But what you don't know yet is how to do line work. Which is why I'm hoping you're still hanging out, waiting for me to get there. But, if you're not, which is fine, to each their own. I know life happens, and I can be boring as sin sometimes. Um, remember that this video will be up on YouTube soon, so you can always skip forward that way. And if you decide to wander off, this video will be up on Twitch, I believe, for like the next 15 days. I think they have some sort of um, system set in place f for that to happen. I think.
But over time, if this is something that you all enjoy watching and learning from, which would be cool, not going to lie, um, cameras will get better, me babbling will, I won't say lesson, because let's be real, I will babble, okay, sorry, that was loud, about anything and everything, I don't think I've stopped to breathe yet in this stream today, I'm not sure why, but, things will get better in time. No one expects you to be perfect the first time you try something, and if they do, then they have unrealistic expectations and are being a butt. You also might see that as I'm going, like the, my Ada cloth is kind of fraying a little bit. It does that because it is literally just woven cloth. It's pretty much just a fancy white burlap, if you think about it and it will fray. To help with that, you can always do a quick whip stitch on a sewing machine or with a needle and thread. Just going around the outside, just with a loose stitch, nothing that's going to, it's not going to stay there forever, it's just going to be there while you're working on your project so it doesn't do what it's doing for me currently. Because trust me, Nothing's going to be worse than you working on something for a few days, a few weeks, and then you come back to it one day and it's just frayed to pieces. Um, personally, what I do when I'm done with pieces, depending on the length of them, is I take a bit of Mod Podge with my fingers and I go along the edges. Like I said before, it is your project, it is your thing. You do you. You do not have to do what I do. I'm just here to try and teach you how I was taught. But I fully expect all of you, this is something you decide you want to get into, to do your own version of what I did. because. I started crocheting um, when my daughter was born so I wanted to do something from home and I thought hey crochet is a nifty talent and not everybody can do it and people like handmade stuff so I asked my mother-in-law if she wouldn't mind teaching me how to crochet and she did she taught me um, she taught me three basic stitches she taught me single crochet double crochet and half double crochet. I took those three stitches I made and I started looking for patterns that had just those stitches so I would get used to shapes and uh, yarn width and weight and just getting used to using a, a hook because I n used to knit which is with two needles and it's a very different mentality I haven't, I, I don't, I can't even tell you if I could knit anymore if I were to pick up needles and go with it. But anyway, started making stuff using just the bits of, that she taught me, and it was great. But then I decided I wanted to try more stuff, see what else is out there. So I slowly started looking at patterns that were mostly stitches that I knew, but we're adding in new things like, oh, what's a treble crochet? Or what's a front post double crochet? And I would work on those patterns and I would use YouTube to learn how to do the stitch. Which, YouTube is a fantastic teaching tool, especially if you find a good person to to listen to and learn from. So once we get past our cross stitch section of what we're currently doing, and I get to line work, I will trans 
I will start doing the same thing I'm doing currently, but with crochet. And I will show you those stitches that I was talking about. A fun one that I personally enjoy, even though it takes a lot of weird effort because it's a really it's an interesting one, is uh, the broomstick stitch. And you would you hear that and you think, oh cool, it's a stitch that looks like a broomstick. Uh, no, it's actually a stitch that involves a broomstick or some sort of rod or pole. I personally use an old shower curtain rod that was, that broke and it's smooth and it's just the right size and you actually crochet around it, interestingly enough. But that is a more advanced stitch. We won't learn, we won't learn that one right off the bat. So. Our mushroom, this one, is done for the most part. So we're going to finish off our floss. Oh, that's why you're being a butt. You, it's also why you want to leave more space when you are working with Ada cloth. Leave a little bit more a few more inches along the edge as a border than the pattern actually calls for so that you don't get you'll see how frayed this part's getting because I'm so close to the edge but we are all learning my dears this is the first time I've done something this big I mean the, the mushrooms we worked on the last time were the first ones I'd ever done. So, like I said, learning together. So, now we're going to do line work. Line work you can do in any color you want. I Again, your project, you do you. We're in any color you want. I personally use black. And you only want one strand of floss. So you're going to want to pull one strand free of the rest of your hank collection. I'm not quite sure what the terminology is for that. You want one strand. It's going to be thin, so you're going to be careful. If you pull on it too hard, it will break. And what we're going to do our pattern here has everything outlined so that everything pops, which is what we're going to do. Now you could go one at a time all the way up. I personally don't do that. It drives me nuts and I find it tedious. So I just, if it's, especially if it's a large straight line, I just go straight up. <clears throat> I make sure it's nice and tight, but I just do a straight line. That way, at least to me, it looks more finished and doesn't look as chunky or bulky. But, like we always say, my dears, to each their own. If you decide you want to do one stitch at a time, you go ahead and you do one stitch at a time. If that's what makes it look done and pretty to you, who am I to tell you that you're wrong? I'm just saying this is what works for me. You see what I mean though as we're moving along how it's quote popping off the Ada cloth because you're outlining it. Give me a few minutes to finish up the line work here and we will compare our one mushroom that is outlined to our one mushroom that is not outlined. 
And you'll see what I mean when I have been babbling about lines make it just off your Ada cloth. I just, I'm not sure why, but it, that reminds me that my kiddo also what really, really, really enjoys Nightmare Before Christmas and wants me to dress her up like uh, Jack Skellington for Halloween. Last year I made her a toothless costume. Complete with uh, wings that are attached with um, elastic straps and a tail, and her hood has eyes and little horns on it. I purposely made it like, <sighs> I want to say like four sizes too big. She still wears it. It's, a, it's the middle of freaking summer, and she still wants to wear it to school. Her teachers love it. Like, oh, did, where did you buy that? It's like, honestly, I bought the hoodie off of Amazon, and then I modified it with a whole lot of felt. A whole lot of patience. And thin wire to make the wings uh, moldable. Unfortunately, the wings are also a bit large. So when she wears it to daycare, she can't wear the wings because she will knock a kid out with those puppies. <laughs> but she's decided she keeps flip-flopping for Halloween for this year that she wants uh, to either go as Jack Skellington and I go as Sally and her baby brother is going to go as Zero. And yet she wants her daddy to go as Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon. Or she'll flip it up and she says, well, I want to I be Toothless and I want my brother to be uh, Toothless's girlfriend from How to Train Your Dragon 3. And then she wants you know me to be Astrid and wants my husband to be um, Hiccup. So I'm pretty much just waiting till September for her to tell me what she wants to do and I'll go from there because at this point trying to make it up now there's a very good chance I'll have like four costumes by the time Halloween rolls around oh you sneaky I see you I see you hiding over there you get outlined whether you like it or not When it comes to outlining, though, you kind of want to be careful because you don't want to accidentally stitch an outline you've already done because then you're going to make your outline go all cattywampus. Corners are okay, but like where I came up right here, I made sure I put that stitch underneath the line that was already there so that I wouldn't have any clashing. And according to our pattern, because a vine is going to come wrap around this, we're just going to outline this chunk and keep going. We're not going to use the black to connect this stalk to this stalk because that vine, if you look at our pattern, is going to curl around. And the vine, we're not going to outline because it's already black and green. And outlining it is just going to make it a bit, a bit much, I think. 
So we're not going to do that, are we? Nope, nope, nope. So, we have one mushroom outlined and one mushroom knot. Do you see what I mean by how it just kind of pops it off your Ada cloth and looks more complete? So I'm going to continue these lines all the way into this mushroom. And like I said before, this might look like it's taking me forever, and we're at like an hour and a half right now when it comes to this part, the, these mushrooms and these vines. But when it's just you and your work and a good music playlist or a good podcast, this just flies by because your hands kind of take over after a while, especially if you know what you're doing or you're comfortable with what you're doing. It just kind of zoom, 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 zoom. Like I showed you how to do the word that over here the last time we got together. And I did the rest of the lettering in less than an hour. Just because I've drawn it so many times. If I didn't know what I was doing at this point, I was going to be in big trouble. But for any of you that are watching though, how about you let me know for next time like what you liked about what I did this time so I know what to repeat. Or, hey, wow, it's really annoying how you don't have all your your stuff together and like you left for like a whole minute when you sliced open your finger to get a band-aid. You have that stuff at your desk. That kind of stuff. Criti constructive criticism is how you better yourself. Notice how I say constructive criticism. You can't just say, oh, wow, your voice sucks. And expect that to, well, A, it's kind of rude to say that. But B, you didn't suggest a way to fix that. Like, hey, you should uh, use a synthesizer. Or, hey, you should um, read off a script or something of that nature. Which I'm not 100% sure how I'd read off a script while doing this because I'm looking down I mean I don't know about you guys I have to look at what I'm doing and that's what I I do when I'm, cro when I'm crocheting or I'm cross stitching I can't look away and read something while I'm doing it and some folks are that talented I am not that person so, I do the best I can with what I got. I'm not going to lie. Let's see. I'm going to go under that stitch. There we go. And again, if the crisscrossy thing that I'm doing is driving you absolutely up the wall, you don't have to do that for yours. Whatever makes you happy with your project, whatever is going to make it look complete and pretty and done to you, that is all you have to worry about, honey. I am just teaching you what I know how to do. 
That is not the end all be all. And if someone does tell you that whatever they're doing is the end all be all, you know, my way to, or the highway kind of mentality, you might want to think twice about spending time with them because that person is not willing to learn new things or branch out and do something that's, you know, might be different, but actually is more comfortable and works better for you as a person. And you can take that in any way that you want, whether it be craft related or relationship related. I think next time we do this, I'm going to have to actually wear my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I have these delightful, what I've nicknamed old lady glasses because I only need them for close up projects or reading for too long because my eyes get all fuzzy and they're not old lady glasses because they're reading glasses they're old lady glasses to me because I also have them on a on a glasses chain <laughs> so I don't lose them <laughs> I have a horrible memory I'll put them down and walk off and I will not remember where I put them and I will be in big trouble because then I don't have my glasses And with that strand, we have finished our mushroom and our line work for our mushroom. And you have listened to me babble for over an hour and a half, and that is, that is a trick. So props to you, my patient one. And that's our mushroom. And that's our line work. It actually makes it so it pops a bit better so you can see it in my camera. And this handy dandy vine we started is going to come down here, wrap around this, and curl up in various locations. But that is it for today, my dears. Uh, like I said, unless requested, we're not we're probably not gonna come back to this piece until I show you when it's done. The next time we get together, we're most likely going to work on um, either a different cross stitch project or we're going to work on a crochet project. But we will figure it out. We'll set up a poll and see what you want to watch get done. Alrighty, try and get some sleep. Monday was a long day for all of us. Hydrate. Shower. And we will see you next time. Sleep tight.